take a girl and a guy and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. Welcome back to another episode of Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. I'm Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Check us out online on our Facebook page, Couple Synergy, or our website, couplesynergy.com. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our, our experiences working with thousands of couples for nearly 20 years. You know, every day we get to hear intimate details about a couple's celebrations, disappointments, and everyday challenges. We've often wished these stories were shared because we know we are more similar than different. So we've created not only an avenue where you can hear about people's intimate lives, but an atmosphere where people come over to our home pub, pour a drink, and share their stories. But people like today's guest, Charles and Manisha, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you for thank having you. us. It is a, this is a really a great honor for, for both of you to join us today. Um, before we get into anything, I want to mention that this episode is also on YouTube as well. So for those of you who would like to see our shining, smiling faces, <laughs> you can just tune in to our uh, YouTube channel, Couple Synergy. And they're our first couple and they're that we're videoing. And they're our first couple videoing. So congratulations. Yep. You guys made the list. <laughs> Thank <Yes>. you. <laughs> So before we also go on, um, Manisha, you have a business as well. It is called Tailored Vacations. Correct. That's with a Y. T-A-Y-L-O-R-E-D. And she is on Facebook, uh, Tailored Vacations 18. Again, remember, that's with a Y. Mm. So for those of you who uh, kind of get to know her and what she does throughout this podcast and you're interested, check her out. So before we get to your story, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about yourselves? Uh, how old are you, and what do you guys do for a living? All right. You can start, babe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I am 43. I uh, am a former attorney turned attorney recruiter, so that's my full-time profession. And then on the side, I do travel. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And I am 44, uh, currently a environmental services uh, manager at a uh, major hospital. And can you tell us the story of how you met? <laughs> well, that's up for debate. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, yeah. I love when they start with that. <laughs> differing, uh, differing stories. Differing I, stories. Yeah, differing, yeah. differing stories. So um, we met uh, at a bowling uh, party. Uh, I want to say January of 95, and now she'll she'll tell her side <laughs> of the story, which is incorrect. But go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you can finish the story. Yeah, so we uh, met through a mutual friend uh, that we uh, both knew and um, just really met, uh, became friends. Uh, I instantly knew there was something special about her. Just one of those, you know, you see her and it's like, <gasps> and, you know, that, that type of thing, you know, uh, happens. I'm um, not quite sure she felt the same way, but, you know, that's why we as men are just, you know, persistent, you know, right? <laughs> in the chase. From across the room, yeah. huh? Yeah. The music stopped. Yeah, the music stopped, you know, you get that. that Light from the heavens. Yeah, the came down. Shone down. That, that, that whole thing. Got yeah, it. That, that whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And your version? <laughs> <laughs> so my version is that freshman year oh. we met. <laughs> oh <boy>. Very <laughs> different time period. Yeah. Here. With yeah. the same friend, went to a Christmas party with or end of the year party. End of the year party. Yeah. End of the year. It was an end of the year party. Okay. Yeah. So this was end of the year. So summer, just before the summer of freshman year, which would have been ninety four. And we went to an end of the year party for his choir. And I don't necessarily recall meeting him. Ah. <laughs> but he took a picture of me with my friends and someone else. So he actually saw me at this party because he had to, because he took a picture. But you don't remember seeing her at the party. 
He claims we never met at the I, party. I don't remember meeting her at the party. <laughs> like, well, how did I show up? Like, I took, a, up I took a ton of pictures that night. <laughs> uh, I, I just do not remember so, meeting so her. So the across the room thing didn't happen until the next year, apparently. I mean, to be to be fair, <laughs> it was a lot of people at this party. <laughs> Where'd you guys go on your first date, and how did that happen? Oh. I don't remember. <laughs> um, I think I think we went. So to, this was months after we met. Yeah, we were friends, and then we decided to start dating. I think we, we were still in college, so we were broke. Yeah, we were broke. So we were. I think we sophomores in college, but where? Uh, probably someplace very affordable. Yeah, <laughs> super <laughs> affordable. Perkins, <laughs> right? Yeah. Bennigan's, uh, yeah. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Hula yeah, I think that was or our, something. Yeah, I think that was our first <laughs> we were date. in Atlanta. So, yeah, I think it was, was a and he was at Morehouse. So, it was one of those. It had to have been Bennigan's or something. Some place we could take the train yeah. to. Well, these colleges, we cars. The clo- colleges were close together. <laughs> yeah, so I, right across the right street. Right across the street from Oh, wow. Other. That's yeah. convenient. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you'll find a lot of Spelman Morehouse couples. <laughs> oh. <laughs> How did you guys know you were a couple? I told him. <laughs> She did. We are a couple now. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I, uh, I think that was a. Uh, I remember being at your room, uh, and for some reason you kept persisting in wanting me to stay, and I was like, "Hey, I need to get back to my room <laughs> so I can go to sleep." Uh, <laughs> so we, I left. We watched and, the Lion King. Yeah, we watched the Lion King. So I left. <laughs> <laughs> and she called me later, you know, after after she got back to uh, after I got back to my room. So I guess she was um, hesitant to voice her her feelings at the time. So it what was did o- she say? Um, yeah, what did I say? <laughs> the conversation I do remember being very long. I don't remember quite specifically what she said, but it eventually it got around to, you know, hey, I really like you and. And uh, I already expressed my feelings. She already knew. He had already expressed it yeah. previously. So I think it was over that, that so. conversation we became uh, a couple. And who said I love you first? <laughs> well, let's go. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was me. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you say that? Um, I, uh, I, I'm a relationship kind of guy. I've uh-huh. never been the type to you know, have three or four girlfriends. I tried. It wasn't successful uh, <laughs> uh, not for lack of trying but uh just i'm just a relationship kind of guy so uh and i i just with her you know i just fell hard so it was it wasn't hard for me at all to to say i love you <laughs> what was it about the other person that you guys fell in love with i think we had a lot of the same interests i, I do remember we did we had a lot of the same interests um and he was very just, he was just very sweet, you know, just a sweet, kind, caring person. So, so let that be a lesson to you, fellas. Nice guys actually do finish first. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's a good one. <laughs> so after you, know, you guys become a, a exclusive couple, right, then how does your relationship progress from there? Um, it was good for a while. Um We'd started sophomore year, and then before senior year, it was me. I totally admit it. I was the one. He was my first real boyfriend. So um, as far as, like, having, like, a dating relationship, you know, in high school, I had some, you know, crushes and that type of thing. But he was actually the first person I ever dated where we actually saw each other outside of school and went out and went to different places and all that. So we actually had like a dating relationship. Um, So for me before senior year, I was nervous. I was just like, he's the only person I've ever really dated. What if we end up getting married? And I just had all this cold feet, literally just cold feet. And I just freaked out. And so I broke up with him. It was my fault. (laughs) (laughs) How long did that last? Uh, like eleven years, right? <laughs> oh. 11 years. oh, you really broke up because <laughs> we had we broke up twice, yeah, but only for a couple days each. Right, yeah. right. Wow, eleven years. Did you guys stay friends? Yeah, yeah, we stay friends. Mm-hmm. 
11 years you guys were broken up for. Yeah. So how does that, how does it happen? You guys get reconnected again. Um, we just always stayed in touch. He'll, he'll tell you he's, he couldn't get rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, she just kept calling me. That's what he would say. Yeah. No, we, we did. We stayed in touch uh, through the years. Uh, like, did. I always knew what was going on in his life because yeah. I would always call. Because he, he mm-hmm. wouldn't call me. I would call him. Like, hi, how are you? Why did you How's call him? Going? I don't know. Because <laughs> you reject him, but then you pursue him. I guess that was it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Is your guy's relationship still like that? No, I don't no. think so. Well, not the rejecting part. We're just. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, <laughs> no, but like, you know, you kind of calling him and kind of, you know, pursuing. being. Yeah, pursuing. Mm-hmm. That's, I guess that's a I good thing. I do word. call him more, yes. I do. Yeah, she'll, she'll call me. Uh, but he's so. he's. I think it's probably because he's an introvert. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and that's we, we've talked about mm-hmm. this yeah. in yeah. our yeah. sessions. He's very independent, mm-hmm. very. I got to do this myself. Yeah. Right. And so I'm always the one that's calling him and checking on him. And so over the 11 you? years, she's mm-hmm. calling you. What are you thinking every time she calls? Um, usually she, uh, she would call and we would, you know, just kind of catch up. Um, she would, uh, uh, she usually had a problem with a boyfriend. Uh, oh, ouch. ouch. That hurts. Uh, so, well, he was I, dating other people. I was dating too. other people. Too. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fair enough. But yeah, she, she would call. She was, you know, uh, would seek my advice on, on some things I would, you know, happily give it. Uh, just let her know, hey, I just want you to be happy. You know, no, no matter what goes on, just, you know, I just want you to be happy. So it was, it was those type of conversations. Uh, we would just talk and. and just uh, try to catch up because we would, we would talk for a little bit and then, you know, kind of not necessarily lose touch, but not call each other in a while. And it was uh, this was the age before Facebook. So, you know, what I'm saying, so yeah, I think right. with Facebook, you don't have to call people as often because mm-hmm. you can just go on their page and see how they're doing. Mm-hmm. This was before Facebook. We actually I think by the time we joined Facebook, we were already engaged. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so how do you guys before Facebook? How do you guys start back up again as a couple? Uh, this was I want to say March of 2007. I don't even remember who called who. It was me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Case I'm in point. The yeah. one who's calling. Yeah. So she <laughs> she called me and I was like, hey, you know, because we hadn't talked in a while, and mm-hmm. uh, I think we talked for like two three hours. Um, and then it was uh, it was great talking to you, you know, stay in touch. Blah, 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 but blah, blah, remember, blah. we've never talked that long. This is true. Uh, and we, that was the were first either time of you we in a relationship like at that time? Two no. hours. Okay. And, How uh, old were you guys at this time? I was 30. I was just around turning 32. Mm-hmm. And, and did you grow up in Chicago? Born and raised. Okay. And, and you did not? No. Correct? Okay. <laughs> so, and your colleges were in what state? Atlanta. 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 Okay. Well, Georgia. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then you were up here for the 11 years and you were down there in, in Georgia. Georgia. Mm-hmm. And that's how you got you just like. <laughs> landline communication, yeah. mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Phone yeah. and email. Phone and yeah, email. phone and email, uh, pretty much. <laughs> so it was that one. Because com- there was, like I said, we weren't on Facebook. Yeah, right. We're on Facebook. <laughs> right. I don't even think we were on. What was the other one? AOL. Before MySpace. Yeah. MySpace. No, MySpace. MySpace. Yeah. MySpace. Wow. MySpace. I had yeah. a MySpace. I think you had a MySpace page. I know I did. Yeah, I think I was late right. to that party. Uh, <laughs> So uh, th- was that that conversation lasted like two three hours, and then you know it went from we call each other every so often to we call each other once a week to we call each other two three times a week to at the point we're just like calling each other every day, mm-hmm. and it was just that connection was rebuilding. Did someone uh, say you know I think 
we should just we can rekindle this again like officially uh, <laughs> uh, i'm seeing a trend <laughs> I think so. a little bit a little bit of a trend mm-hmm. yeah i didn't want to i was very scared to do it um but it was funny i talked to my good friend's father who, about shout out to it. dr davis <laughs> <laughs> that man is an icon <laughs> <laughs> and he was just like, well, if you if you feel like you're feeling something, you should tell him. And I was like, but he's the guy. Isn't he supposed to say something first, you know? And he was like, not necessarily. He was like, didn't you break up with him? I was like, well, yeah. He's like, okay, well, then that rule does not apply in this situation. <laughs> he's like, and if he's a good man, he's not going to be around for long, you know? <laughs> and so, so I had the conversation with him, and he told me he wanted to think about it. You said that you wanted to think about it. Yes. Yeah, I did. Oh, what yeah. was going through your head? Um, a, a lot of things, a lot of emotions. Um, just kind of rekindling of mm-hmm. uh, uh, my love for her that never really left. Uh, it was just kind of buried somewhere, but it just never really left. And also dealing with the the pain of our breakup eleven years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it, it was. It was that situation. I was just going through, you know, a number of things in, in my head. You know, me trying to get out of my shell and allow myself to be vulnerable, to you know, be able to let someone back in. Because mm-hmm. uh, really, after her, after we broke up, I mean, I dated other women, but it wasn't. Yeah, I wasn't all in. Uh, so, th- did that come as a shock to you? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Yes, I remember going to uh, uh, going to a party. I told her, I was like, "Hey, I'm going to this party." She was like, "Well, who's going to be there?" I'm like, people. <laughs> uh, she said, "Women going to yeah, women are are going to be there." Yeah, and unbeknownst to me, actually, there was a woman at the party who I didn't know took an interest in me. So I found that out later as, as well. <laughs> 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 so, so what happens next what did you do after you were thinking uh we 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 talked again uh, and i expressed like my full feelings to her just my uh concern of of being hurt again but yet still you know my my heart belongs to you i i want to take things uh slow this time <laughs> uh so it was at that point i want to say it was like may Mm-hmm. Yeah, about May of 2017. Uh, we no 2007. I'm sorry, May of 2007. <laughs> yeah, uh, May of 2007. We we became a couple again. And and this is still long distance though. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she was still in Atlanta, so we were um, try to plan like once a month visits. Either I go down there, or she comes up here. Wow, how yeah. did you guys do that? Mm, it's very expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So navigating a long distance relationship and and you guys did that for how long then? Mm. Till I moved here. Yeah, it was over almost over a, a year. Almost a year and a half. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. That's yeah. a long time. Yeah, we actually got engaged long distance. Yeah, we got engaged <laughs> long distance. I, so tell us your engagement oh, story. Oh yeah. Um so she came with me to uh, my parents' house in Mississippi for Thanksgiving. So she pretty much got to meet most, if not all, of my family uh, that were there. So, you know, I was kind of going up to people in my family who I supremely trust. Shockingly enough, my father was not one of them. <laughs> um, but I, I think I went to uh, um, my aunt and, you know, I asked her about it. She's like, oh, she's great. I love her, you know. And everybody was just like, oh, she's so sweet. And, you know, so it was like that kind of cemented it for me uh, that, you know, if we were going to go long term, you know, I know my family. Not that that was the determining factor, but it was great that, you know, everybody just just loved her to pieces. Uh, so there was that. We flew to Miami for New Year's, or I did, um, asked for um, her parents' blessing. She said yes. And then I surprised her. Um, and were you were you by yourself when you talked to her parents? Yes. How was that for you? Uh, a little nervous. Yeah, yeah, I was a little nervous. He, did you know he was doing that? Mm-hmm. She, okay. yeah, she did. Oh, you, you knew. Yeah, she knew. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but it was the the proper thing, you know, the traditional mm-hmm. thing to, mm-hmm. you know, ask the parents for for the blessing. So I I did that. 
her mother was just really super happy. She was like, oh, welcome to the family. So I think um, I think it was the middle of January. I flew down to Atlanta, which I was going to do anyway. Um, uh, when I got there, I was like, hey, pack a bag. We're going to Chateau Alon for the weekend. She just thought we were going there for the weekend. <laughs> I was suspicious. She, she might have been a little suspicious, <laughs> but I was like, hey, pack your bags. We're going to Chateau Alon. I got this really good room, really cool rate. Uh, so we get there. Um, uh, I think it was the first night. Uh, we had this really nice dinner there. They come with the champagne, everything. She was expecting, I'm sure, when the champagne <laughs> came, was. right, that the, right. The, <laughs> that the engagement <laughs> ring would, would, would be, be there, there right? Right? would be there <laughs> with <laughs> it. I um, was so disappointed. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't. So they actually had this statue outside of uh, Chateau Alain, which was where I was originally going to propose to her. But it snowed. <laughs> <laughs> snowed. Yeah, it snowed that day. Uh, I got maybe an inch or two. So I was like, well, that's going to totally kill my plan about, you know, going outside and proposing to her. <laughs> so I think I found uh, uh, this other area in, in the resort and uh, I proposed to her. So I, after that, dinner. Yeah, after dinner. <laughs> uh, Were you already thinking this isn't the time? Yeah, because I thought it was going to happen during dinner. Yeah. If, I was like, if he's going to propose, it'll probably be during dinner. And then after I ordered the champagne and there's no ring in the glass and then <laughs> there's nothing happened to dessert. I was like, okay, well, it's not going to happen. Then. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I guess I was wrong. <laughs> but you'd already known that he had asked you know, your, your mother for that. Right. Because right? we kind of had to go to Florida for that to happen. Right. You know, so, yeah. So you I just didn't that. know when I just didn't she know was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So then... You move up to Chicago shortly after that, or no? I yeah. actually didn't move to Chicago until that was in January. I didn't move until October. Till October, yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. And then, uh, where do you guys go from there? How long did you before you got married? Oh was, well, we we already had a date set um, when I moved to Chicago. It was our date was set for April of the following year. So I was already like planning and stuff in Atlanta, and because it was going to be in Atlanta. So I was planning and everything then. So I was in the process of planning, but I just hadn't moved to Chicago yet. So. Okay. Okay. So you guys got a lot of frequent flyer miles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> At the time, absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's hard to get them now. Yeah. But, uh, oh. Back then, I'm sure. So you guys had the wedding down in Atlanta. Yes. Yeah. Did you have anything up in Chicago, like a second no, type of thing? No, no. Everything was, all, was down there. Yeah, that, that day in Atlanta. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then you guys move up to Chicago. And then what? <laughs> We're married now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was it. Um, and we. How long you guys been married now? Uh, ten, ten years. Ten years. Ten years. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So, what is it that you guys learned as children from your parents, and how are you similar or different from them now? Um, so I trying to me trying to be a bit more vulnerable. Um express my my feelings uh whatever they may be fears whatever um with her more uh that was not necessarily something i really saw as a child growing up so uh i saw a, a version of manhood which wasn't bad uh but it may have not necessarily been complete um, and maybe he did, my dad did share those things, but maybe behind closed doors or whatever. So mm-hmm. it wasn't something I really got to saw. I got to see Superman, you know, on a daily basis, mm-hmm. but I, you know, there were times. You didn't uh, get to see Clark. Kent. Yeah. I didn't get to see Clark Kent a lot. <laughs> <laughs> How did you decide that, that you wanted that for yourself? Um, probably, um, as I, I got older and especially after, uh, uh, I got married and really after my mother passed and that we had a family, I really had a family of my own. And I was like, hey, there's some things that I can do, you know, a little differently uh, to make sure uh, that that I, she knows that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here for you and uh, uh, just being completely open and and just letting all of my insecurities and fears out and that I'm not this this uh wall of ultimate you know coolness under pressure (laughs) (laughs) 
And and where were you guys at uh, in your relationship when your mom passed? Um, I think we were in a good place, but after she passed, I just really mm-hmm. just went inside myself, uh, just not really able to uh, process properly uh, her passing. Um, she had been sick for uh, years, but uh, again, when she she passed, it was still sudden. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was she was fighting every day dealing with with uh, her illnesses uh but anytime you can just get a phone call you know at the uh in the middle of the afternoon saying hey you know the doctors are saying your mother may not be able to make it you know another day that's mm-hmm. jarring mm-hmm. so um yeah that really just threw me for a loop mm-hmm. just really knocked me out and when you guys got married, was was his mother already ill at that yeah. time? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And how about for you, Monisha, in terms of your family influence and how you show up in relationship? Um, so I would say um, for me, it was, I think that's also part of the reason why I broke up with him initially was because the relationship that I saw that my parents had, it was more... You know, they argued, they had, you know, issues, you know, communicating that type of thing. And with him, it was just so easy that I was just like, our relationships aren't supposed to be like this. (laughs) (laughs) So you didn't trust it. I didn't trust it. He, He and I, we never fought. You know, we always communicated. We always, we got, we were best friends. And I was just like, I don't know if that's what I'm supposed to have. You know, like I, I was really like, you know, um, I just didn't trust it. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just being, you know, my first relationship. It actually was, but that was part of it. But the other part of it was that I wasn't modeled for me growing up as well. So, and how was him dealing with his mom's illness? How did that impact you and how'd you support him? Um, it, it was hard for me. I, I wasn't sure how to support him. So I would just, you know, ask him how he was doing and kind of, you know, talk to him as much as I could, but it was difficult for me because I hadn't been in that situation, you know, so it was a little hard to know what to do, but all I could do was say, Hey, I'm here, you know, if you need me and offer to help as much as I could. So. So more of that calling him, Right, pursuing him. Right? <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. how can I? You know, how did you? You know, you, you said that after she passed, that's when you really started to kind of take a look inside and kind of figure out, you know, how do you want to do things? How do you want to move forward in your life, right? And you want to do things a little bit differently. Yeah. You know, how did that affect the two of you guys together? Um, I, I'm sure it created some distance, and that was. Uh, you know, some of that was of my own doing because I just went completely uh, inward with also trying to have the facade of everything, you know, still being being OK. So, you know, it wasn't like I, I wasn't missing work, um, you know, I was making sure, you know, I'm there for the, the kids and everything. But, yeah, I, I, I went inward. So on the outside, you look the same. Outside, I look the same. Yeah. You know, um, but you were really struggling seriously yeah yeah did you know he was struggling not really you know um I know in every once in a while he would have moments where he you know would cry or he would have moments where you know he would ex- express that he how much he missed his mom but I didn't know that he was struggling outside of mm-hmm. that when did you have a clue mm, probably when we came to you all, <laughs> I think that was that was when I really learned how much he was he was really struggling. Mm-hmm. So, how did you guys deal with conflict? You know, up until you start figuring it out and everything, what, what was conflict like between the two of you normally? Mm-hmm. Conflict. Uh I know you would not talk to me for maybe a couple of days. <laughs> 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 um, I would uh, just kind of mentally shut down. Uh, and uh, I think that's probably how we dealt with it until we both like, hey, we, we need to 
we need to hash this out and, and, and clear the air about things. But were you guys good at resolving conflict or did it yeah, just once sort we, of Yeah, once we talked okay. and, mm-hmm. you know, really, you know, hashed out what was what was going on and the issue was resolved and everything was, was good. But it was that, that, you know, initial, hey, she's not talking to me. I'm just <laughs> I'm just shut down mentally. Yeah. Uh, so it was it was kind of uh, uh, strenuous in, in trying to, to communicate when I'm when she's not talking and I'm. And we didn't like to argue. Yeah. So we would just kind of not deal with it until we were ready to talk about it. <laughs> So just sweep it under the carpet. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Until we were ready Until to it discuss got lumpy. it. Yeah. yeah, until the carpet got a little lumpy. It was like, hey, we need to. Then we're like, okay, we need to talk we about We need to this. talk about what's going right. on. Right. But we, neither one of us really likes to argue. Mm-hmm. And I, actually, I don't think we really do ever argue. No. When we do talk about it, it's, it's um, you know, it's, it's, it's always talk, respectful. It's respectful. It's all, we don't yell at yeah. each other or anything like that. We, we share our, our opinions and we, we come to a. Uh, solution, even if it's a difference of opinion, uh, right? We'll we'll, just ag- we'll, we'll, agree agree, we'll agree to work disagree, with it. work with <laughs> it, and, and move on. What is it like for each of you during your periods of silence? Like, what are you thinking? It's How do you hard? Think? Like, I don't like to be silent too long. Um, it's hard because uh, I don't like to stay angry with. I, I can't stay angry at him long, you know. Um, tried. Uh, <laughs> sometimes I'm just like, and then I'm just like, well, it's okay, you know. So I I can't stay mad at him long. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's more like I'll process it and I'm like, okay, how do I talk about it? Okay, we got to figure this out, and then and then I'll talk to him, and say, okay, we need to talk, and of course he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what what does that mean? <laughs> he, whenever I say we have to talk, he's like, oh, oh, I always oh, make the man. the, the running joke. The, oh man. Of, uh, I think it was, uh, I think it was from a Dave Chappelle uh, special uh, where he was, uh, he had this joke and he was like, uh, yeah, whenever I'm in a relationship with a woman, it's like, we got to talk. And he's like, ah, <laughs> he's, the punchline was like, cause I know it's always something that I got to, you know, fix. <laughs> Is that a typical pattern where you soften first and approach him after you guys have not been talking? Yeah, I mean, we usually don't give each other the silent treatment for long. Uh-huh. <laughs> like say, but, a, um, a day, maybe two tops. You know. uh, two days? That's kind of long. Right, maybe a day. <laughs> but do you ever initiate? Um, no, she'll she'll come to me because uh, I think she knows when I, uh, in the past, when I've like kind of gone inward that, me he doesn't come me out. Me broaching the subject is probably not going to happen. <laughs> I have to go get him. Uh, <laughs> you know, but since since then, you know, if come something out. yeah, come out. <laughs> since then, we've been coming to you. You know, if something's on my mind, I'm like, hey, um, you know, I I got an issue here. Yes, he's much better about coming to me with. Yeah, because I think if you guys are having a, a stalemate and you're both aware of it it's easy for you to know there's a problem and to approach mm-hmm. him. But what if you don't know? Mm-hmm. Like when he was grieving, mm-hmm. I think that's when it gets tricky when someone can't read your mind and you look the same on yeah. the outside. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Struggling with, with your mom's passing and illness, was that the most challenging or most difficult thing that the two of you have handled together? Um, mm, no, not probably the, the infertility. Yeah. I think that was the that was probably the that was the the toughest uh, part uh, uh, of our marriage because we we both so desperately wanted to have kids and for three years uh, we we tried and and nothing uh, was happening so um, it was went to doctors yeah we did what IVF saw fertility specialists we did not do IVF Uh, you didn't no (laughs) not IVF it was IUI IUI we did IUI what does those letters mean so IUI is oh god I (laughs) I forgot what it was but basically IUI I call it the turkey baster method (laughs) okay (laughs) so IUI is basically they you know it's you know the woman and they use a device to you you know use the man you know, put the man's 
fluids. In the it's okay. We're, we're adults. I, I, I'll go from here. <laughs> so it's, it's basically a, it's basically a turkey baster where they basically ins- insert the sperm into. What's the yeah. advantage of that? They try to do it like they at the right moment at yeah. the right moment so okay. they'll they inject me to make me ovulate with uh so i have to take an injection and then i have to take the fertility pills um the medication it's like a called clomid and you have to take that and then the doctor will say okay come in now you're ovulating now come in now and then we do the and they've already got a ready supply going mm-hmm. right yeah. they get it from him mm-hmm. and, yeah how how many treatments I think we did two. We did two of them. Two yeah. of them. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that was toward the end. And you have to end. do it once a month. You yeah. can only do it once a month. Once a month, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, okay. Um, when the woman's ovulating. So we did it two cycles of it. Yeah. But yeah, that was toward and the then what end. Happened? That was toward the end of the three year journey. It was. Journey. So that was toward so the three year journey. For us, that was kind of last resort. We're, right. Because I didn't want to do that. I didn't want medical intervention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so we finally agreed to do it. Mm-hmm. And we did it twice. Um, and it was successful? Nope. No. Nope. Neither it was not successful. Yeah. So at that point, I was like, okay, I'm done. Does insurance typically cover something like that, or is that out of pocket? Uh, uh, no, insurance covered it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, insurance covered but it. But it. It, was, it, was, uh, it was gut-wrenching mm-hmm. um, to, to hear those you know, negative results, not once, but twice. So we were both just kind of... Um, but we had gone through a lot prior yeah. to that. I mean, he had been tested. I had been tested. Yeah. So it was like... He was on supplements. Yeah. So I was on supplements trying to so was, make sure everything was ideal. Yeah. It w- wasn't you like know. there was anything like physically wrong with either one of us. But it, it for some reason, it just was not mm-hmm. happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, once we got the to the IUI uh, treatments and then they, they turned negative, it was just... We were really... Um, just emotionally uh, in kind of a bad spot, uh, just trying to support each other, but at the same time, you know, almost kind of like grieving. We like we may never be able to have kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you know, for a lot of couples that go through that struggle, it it seems to, you know, kind of change their their natural intimacy. Mm-hmm. You know, between each other. Did did you guys have any of that kind of yeah. experience? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. it was like. Okay, we're timing this. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. At this particular time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, okay, I'm so now it's like more calculated. Keeping track of my, yeah. of my That's cycle. That's always so sexy. And, yeah. Right. <laughs> nope, like, hey, right babe, now, right now. Hey, babe, I'm ovulating. Let's, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm kind of tired. I had yeah. a 12 hour work <laughs> no, day. I don't care. Yeah. I don't care. We got to go now. No choice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, did you decide to stop after two, or was that all that was available for you? That I decided to stop. Yeah. I told him, I was like, I can't. I can't do this anymore. And I was not even going to even even bridge the, the subject of saying, hey, let's do one more time, because I was uh, equally uh, disappointed mm-hmm. and uh, depressed about it. And I didn't want her to have to go through that uh, anymore. I was actually um, a little surprised when she uh, brought it up as, you know, let's let's try this because we were both. Uh, um wanting this to happen naturally so when she brought it up i was like oh all right all right we'll, we'll do it um uh, but after like i said the two negative testing it was just like no i this let's just not do this anymore so what happens from there uh, um that's so that was in october october of 2013 yeah yeah so and then um no, 2012. No, 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 it was 13. 13. 13. Yeah. And then, so in January, I got pregnant. Hmm. Yes. Naturally. 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 Wow. Yeah. That must um, have been a huge relief. Yeah, it was. It was, uh, a surprise. it was definitely surprising. Because <laughs> um, re- that was October. So like November, December, and I was yeah. just like, Sad. I was just like, oh well. I guess yeah. Sort of coming to terms with. Yes. Yeah, just coming yeah. to terms with we were, everything. You we were beginning to talk about, hey, you know, maybe let's, we'll adopt, we'll adopt in the future you know, or something. These, these type of things. So I, I, I do remember um, uh, New Year's of 2013. I just kind of, uh, I may even posted it on Instagram. I was 14. like, uh, tw- 2013 going into 2014. Oh, okay. Just kind of <laughs> make this declaration, like, hey, because uh, I was not only going through. Uh, uh, difficulties with trying to with us trying to get pregnant. I was going through difficulties with uh, the job I was at at the time, so it was kind of like a double-edged sword. And I was like, "Look, I'm 
we're going into 2014. Look, I, I'm going to be in a better position in terms of employment. We're going to have a baby. I'm just going to believe these things. These mm-hmm. things are going to happen. So um, I think the middle of January, I, I got a new position with a different company. So that happened. And then I remember the day uh, just because <laughs> I just remember the day. It was January 31st. Um, I was in between my old job and getting ready to start my new job. So I had a little vacation time uh, to myself. And so I was asleep. She comes bursting through the, the bedroom door, like in tears, like unconsolable. I jump up thinking something like really bad has happened. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, baby, what's wrong? What's wrong? And she's trying to mouth out the words, <laughs> I'm pregnant. But <laughs> it just sounded like, <laughs> <laughs> so um, finally she, she, uh, she says, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant. I'm like, what? <laughs> um, How did you find out? I tested. <laughs> yeah, she just did. You did you know she was thinking of testing or that she? No, I think you just got up that morning and just decided to test yourself. Yeah, yeah. You, you didn't have symptoms. You weren't late. You had no. I was due for okay. my cycle, and uh-huh. you see, my cycle was at least at that point was pretty on point with all the medication and stuff. So it was like should have had my cycle by now so i was late so you're, but not really so late. you're not only like a few minutes late. pregnant yeah. right yeah i wasn't like super late yeah maybe like a week or something it wasn't like weeks but it was like i was probably my thing might have been like a week where i was like why well, don't i have my cycle okay maybe i'll do a test because i had tons of tests from yeah. <laughs> from the whole journey i had tons of tests so i was like i'll just take a test and let's see and yeah, it, it came out positive. And I was like, what? <laughs> this has got to be wrong. That's <laughs> like another test. <laughs> and then it said positive. And I was like, okay. So then I just broke down crying. And then I went and woke him up. And he, yeah, he's right. I couldn't get the words out. I was <laughs> and he was like, what? <laughs> yeah, so she showed me the she showed me the test. And I was like, oh, wow. Because he didn't believe me. <laughs> he was like, yeah. what? And I was like, come look at the test. <laughs> I just remember uh, she was in tears. I... I was in tears. We just called each other's parents that morning. Uh, my dad couldn't have been happier. Uh, he was finally going to be a grandfather because he uh, likes to needle me on Father's Day whenever I call him for Father's Day. He was like, well, I would wish you a happy Father's Day, but, you know, you're, you're, you're not, not a father. Father, <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. yeah, so I can't uh, say that no more. Yeah. So yeah, he was he was uh he was super excited. Uh and it was that was just the really uh that was a really special special day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So all your belief, right? It just, came to fruition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. Do you, do you think that your belief was part of impacting the outcome of what happened i would say yeah yeah it was just uh words have power mm-hmm. uh belief has power and if you truly believe in in something and believe that you want that to happen for you it, it's it's gonna happen yeah um and i i just had that that feeling that we're, we're going to be parents and mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to be great parents to our kids and I, I just never went away from that feeling even if the the end option was we had to end up adopting uh kids we, we were just going to be parents mm-hmm. so um yeah uh, I, I i truly believe that that had an impact you know we hear that story a lot of couples who are struggling with infertility that you know, they get to a point that they just stop, you know, that they're they're done kind of putting their energy towards that. And then lo and behold, they get mm-hmm. pregnant naturally. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I think the statistic is like 80 percent of infertility is unexplained by the medical community. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. huge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. And so that that belief, yeah. you know, it, and the power of that, that I think there's there's something about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Definitely. I think all they could say for us was like stress. Yeah. Right. And then they they had some supplements that they recommended that he take and that I take, you know, to help 
Um, and then I did some research about a special diet that you can go on to eliminate certain things in your system or whatever. I the, did acupuncture. Yeah. <laughs> I did some of everything. <laughs> the, the, the funny thing about all of that was... Oh, I did fertility yoga. Yeah, she did fertility <laughs> yoga. She did that. The funny thing was I had run out of my supplements, I want to say late December. Oh, and wow. had not gone to Target or Walgreens or whatever to get the, the supplements. Mm-hmm. So I was out. Wow. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that, that was... Uh, Interesting. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did any of the things that you did, the yoga and acupuncture, do you feel like that contributed to you having a better environment to have a baby? I do think the acupuncture mm-hmm. helped um, because it helps to just relieve stress. Sidebar, I don't know um, how you did that because I, I could not <laughs> have done acupuncture. I did it a few times, yeah. actually. Um, acupuncture helps the, the blood to flow to certain areas and it helps you to relieve stress. And then the fertility yoga, same thing. It helps you to do certain movements that increase blood flow to your reproductive system. So um, it was just a DVD that I bought and I just kind of followed mm-hmm. along with the movements and stuff. But all of that contributes to relieve you know, helping the body to release stress. How about for you and so, your belief system? Did that, was there ever a shift in there that made a difference for you? Um, I think for me, I was just more like, okay, you know, God, whatever your will is, I'll adhere to it. Um, I had prayed of course, cause I, I wanted to have kids, but when it wasn't happening, I was like, okay, well this is not my timetable. It's God's timetable. And I just kind of released it. Mm-hmm. You know, at that point, I was just, I'm releasing it. I'm just not going to focus on that. I'm just, because it was stressing me out. So I was like, I'm going to focus on, ooh, focus on relieving my stress. Mm-hmm. So that was what I was focused on. And how many kids do you guys have now? Two. Two, yay. Hey. <laughs> and any problems conceiving the second? Nope. No. <laughs> that was actually a shock. Yeah, that was. <laughs> another yeah, surprise. <laughs> yeah, the second Well, one. we knew we wanted a second. Yeah. And so, so we had my son, he just turned five and we knew he was the, he was like one, but mm-hmm. I was turning 40 and I was just like, well, we're going to go for it. We might as well get started because since I'm turning 40, it's probably going to take a while. <laughs> so that's what I thought anyway. So I had said, you know, probably take about six to eight months, you know, I'm older, you know, whatever. So you guys so, were preventing until then. Huh? You were preventing getting pregnant. For five years. Um. No. Oh no, 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 because he was only one. Yeah, he was only oh, one. Oh, so okay. we were really okay. only yeah. prevented for maybe a little over a year. Okay. And yeah. Then, and then as soon as you went, all right, all in again. Yeah. Nice. Right, and then um, that was it what? was like. <laughs> February? Maybe? It was, yeah. So it was literally like we had decided. I turned forty in December, and we were like, well, it's gonna take a while, and then. Two months after I turned forty, I was pregnant. <laughs> so yeah, we weren't expecting that. We thought yeah. I, we thought it was gonna take longer because I was forty. So, yeah. but it didn't. Yeah. And my doctor was like, "Woo, well, you're very pregnant." Like those were those she are was, her, she those are her exact shocked. words. She was like, <laughs> "You're very pregnant." She was like, "You're forty." Okay. Uh, like she was like shocked that I was. She was like, "Oh yeah." Mm-hmm. So I know um, you guys haven't heard the podcast yet, but we have an episode that kind of talks about three things that you can do to change your relationship right now. And you guys, I think really rock star one of them. So I wanted to talk about that for a few minutes. And that thing is trying new things together Mm -hmm. and not just new things, but things that are um, maybe a little risky. And I think it ties back to the work that you do in your travel agency where you guys do, do a lot of that. Can you guys talk about like the places you've been and how that has impacted your relationship? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, So about a year ago, I, um, one of my sorority sisters introduced me to a travel business, uh, that she had been doing and she was saying how she was saving on her travel and she was earning commission on her travel. And she was like, it's been great. And I was like, Oh, I want to travel more. <laughs> I would love to do that. Cause my, before kids, my husband and I traveled quite a bit, mm-hmm. you know, cause we were like, well, we're not getting pregnant. Let's just go. What, travel. what are some great places you've been to? Oh, wow. Uh, we've been to Cozumel. We've been to Grand Cayman Islands. We've been to Bahamas. We've went been to, to Punta Cana. Went to Punta Cana. That was a fun week. <laughs> um, 
That's just, DR, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, cause go quite a few places, Las Vegas. Yeah, we've a been lot. to Vegas uh, a number of times. <laughs> and so we were just like, oh yeah, we want to travel more. And I was like, but well, we have kids now mm-hmm. and all that. She's like, you can still, I have kids. She's like, you can still travel with kids. I was like, okay, let me see. So, uh, got the information from her. I told him, I was like, I want to do this travel business. And what do you think? And he was just like, he's seen me do other businesses before. So he was just like, okay, whatever. Like, (laughs) he's seen me do other things unsuccessfully before. So he was just like, oh, whatever makes you happy, babe. You know, just go ahead. So I was like, okay. So, and then I started, you know, booking travel for us and for other people. And he was just like, he, he now he's like more and more interested and involved in it, which is great. You know, it's great to know that I'm not alone in it, you know. So he's been very supportive, very helpful, very excited because he loves to travel. So he's like watching videos now and telling me, oh, can we go here? Can we go there? And so yeah. very much into it. But yeah, we've been a few places. Um, we went to St. Lucia, actually. I booked it before I became a travel agent, but we went after I became a travel agent, so that was even more fun. So we went to St. Lucia. The big um, one was Hawaii. The big one was Hawaii. We'd been wanting to go to Hawaii forever. forever. (laughs) That was like a dream of ours. And we were still on our list. Yeah, (laughs) right. We were able to make it happen with the whole family. Yeah. Um, because his father, my dad got remarried, uh, and so uh, we were able to fly out there. Took the whole family, and I I booked the whole family and. Um, brought my kids along and we were able to save on it Mm -hmm. and it was just unbelievable. It was amazing. And so we've been able to just achieve these travel dreams of ours that we hadn't been able to do before I started the business. So, so how do you guys balance that with kids? Right. I'm sure there's a lot of couples out there and be like, well, how do they do that? (laughs) You you know, it, it, it helps when, when the grandparents are in the same city. I think that's probably about the only real challenge for us is neither one of our parents are in the same city. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, with, with kids, take them with you. Uh, especially if you have the travel business, uh, you can sit, like she said, save on, on so much, uh, uh, money. You get commission for yourself, uh, and you're able uh, to to bring the whole family along yes. and stay at four and five star you know, hotels and resorts. And, mm-hmm. Do you guys yeah. take advantage of the programs they have for the kids? Because a lot of them yeah. offer like daycare, right? They do. They do. Mm-hmm. They have kids clubs yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and, and so we yeah, we want to do a Disney cruise at one point. We want to do a Disney cruise. That's on that's on yeah. the list. But we are taking them to Disney in two weeks, which yeah. has also been a dream of mine. Yes, nice. since I had. Our kids. I was yeah. like, I got to take them to Disney. <laughs> and this this made it possible. So yeah. we're so excited um, to take them. They don't know. We're going to surprise them. Fun. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so is this like a typical uh, contact a travel agent and they schedule things for you? Or is there more of a benefit to it than just that? Um, so there, I do both. So I kind of, I book travel for others who Mm -hmm. want to book travel. And then I have people who come to me who want to do what I do. And so I help them get started. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of twofold as to what I do. Um, he's also a travel agent as well. I am. Uh, (laughs) And and you guys are doing that mostly initially for personal reasons so that you get your own commissions and stuff like that. But then you can also pass it on and teach other people how to do that. Mm Exactly. And to me, that's even more fun is just showing people that they can do it too. If they have a travel bucket list, they can achieve it too, Mm -hmm. you know, um, and get some money back as opposed to just paying all this money out and not getting anything back. So, And, and is that because of the, the perks that, that, um, resorts have with travel agents and and so they deal with you as though you're the travel agent right so like commissions built in when you travel Mm -hmm. so when you're a travel agent you're able to get that back okay um or any of the other benefits that's the savings you're talking about so yeah okay Mm -hmm. so you know we we make a differentiation between family time and couple time Mm -hmm. are you guys able to balance the two yeah yeah how yeah, you, and how do you guys do that. do that? So we well, we've done some staycations. Yeah, we've done some. Yeah, we've been blessed with some amazing yeah. babysitters that have actually watched our kids overnight, so we could do a staycation hey, in the city. <laughs> like just yeah, I know you tour some of those street. cool hotels. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, and mm-hmm. we've been able to just locally go, yeah. go and do a staycation, or we went maybe a couple hours away to Wisconsin one time and 
stayed at a hotel and got our couple time away from the kids. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's that's been fun. And then we'll also do like just your standard date nights. Mm-hmm. So you really know, one of the things we hear from couples who don't uh, prioritize that couple time is that they feel really guilty. They mm-hmm. feel guilty leaving the kids. You, yeah, you know, I've had people yeah. mention that to me too. That they feel they're like, "How do you you don't feel guilty leaving your kids?" And I'm like, "No, no, <laughs> absolutely do you, not." Do you think it contributes no. to you being not only a better couple but better parents? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, getting mm-hmm. that time away, getting that refresher, and I also feel like just in life, you know, makes you a better employee if you're if you get away from your mm-hmm. job for a little bit and just get her you know well just you're able to relax and refresh and renew i think it just makes you a better person in general is there is there a benefit to your kids to spend time with a babysitter oh yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) i agree they love first of all they love their babysitters they their babysitters are were their former daycare teachers so Mm -hmm. they literally have known them since they were babies and um, they they love them. They love spending time with them. So that whole concept of it takes a village. Yeah. 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 Totally. Yeah. Uh, I know. I think we, we still have a planned trip for December. Yes. Okay. So they'll be going to see their, <laughs> my dad, uh, their, their pawpaw, as they l- love to call them. So. Uh, so you guys get uh, a longer trip. Yeah. Where are well, you going? Mexico. Mexico. Oh, nice. nice. We're going to Cabo. We've never been to Cabo before. Yeah. We've no. been to Mexico a few been, times, yeah. but not Cabo. Not, not Cabo. So excited now here's here's a question for you guys that might be a little bit more serious one but if all the travels that you guys are doing have you ever run into places or situations where race becomes an issue Hmm, that's a good question i know it's happened like I, i'm actually in a group where they actually shared some things that have happened to them it hasn't happened to us yet yeah okay um i do know it's possible Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm, I feel like I'm always aware of my surroundings, you know, and aware of things that can happen. Yeah. So I'm always kind of just cautious whenever I travel. And I also tell people to be cautious and be aware of your surroundings um, just for safety issues, you know, mm-hmm. period. Not not necessarily just race issues, but pa- safety as well, mm-hmm. just to always be aware. Have you noticed a difference in different parts of the country or outside of the country? Um... Not recently, no. Yeah, no. Not, not recently, mm-hmm. I don't think. Um, I'm trying to remember. I think, sir, I think things are probably the most racist in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. Like, you get outside of here, yeah. and it's just not. Yeah, <laughs> Chicago is, is. Chicago's bad. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. we, we had, you know, two incidents. Yeah. You know, one wow. was traveling through Alabama when we were uh, dating, right? right. No, we were dating. I think we were first married. No, first married. Mm-hmm. And then there was also an incident in, in uh, Wyoming. Mm. Yeah, it's kind of subtle. Like, they won't yeah, it's not come blatant. and serve you. Mm. They mm. just ignore you, you know, mm. kind of right. like wow. that. Or like, mm. you know, the stairs or something like that. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't blatant, but it's, you know, it's more subtle kind of mm-hmm. thing. But mm-hmm. it does I'm sort of feel curious. like, let's get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. This doesn't feel good, mm-hmm. you know. Right. But I mean, we, we like to go to like really off the beaten path kinds of places. Mm-hmm. We mm-hmm. like to experience. Not We don't want to follow like kind of tourist spots mm-hmm. got to see we, we stay in the tourist spot right <laughs> so yeah, that might right. be why that's we probably why really <laughs> we really haven't uh, had a lot of issues we've had just the opposite like yeah, people was, of mm-hmm. all backgrounds all backgrounds seem yeah. to love him especially <laughs> well, listen, this, is, this is what i'm here for best friends <laughs> if you guys <laughs> they give them yeah, drinks if you need free drinks come travel with me <laughs> <laughs> everyone buys you free drinks yeah. yes oh my yeah. gosh it's i think crazy. that the first time vegas it was no no our honeymoon was it our honeymoon? Yeah, it was our honeymoon where they bought drinks. Okay. Well, yeah. it, it was, the drinks were free, but... Or was it the cruise? No, I think it was the cruise we went on. Yeah, so it, yes, yeah. it was the cruise. Yeah, it was the cruise. We've been <laughs> in a number of cruise. places. Even here in Chicago, we, <laughs> yeah. were at a, uh, we were at a bar during... Uh, we were going to a Bears game, and um, this guy, he was just in a really great mood. He was like, hey, you know, just come sit next to me and just starts talking, get, <laughs> telling me his life story. And I was like, all right, great. He's like, hey, let me buy you guys some drinks. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be the one to, uh, to turn down free alcohol. So. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that typically have happens you, with me. Have you guys noticed a difference over the years? 
so like what we're talking about is probably the late 1990s. Yeah, I mean, we haven't run anything in as the of last, recent. Yeah, yeah, 15 years or right. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think... But um, I think generationally things are better, you know. Um. Yeah, probably depending on where you go, but yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd, um, I think probably over the next couple of years when we start venturing out to other places where we've talked about going, you know, maybe, maybe if it's the, the Maldives or I personally want to go to uh, the United Arab Emirates, uh, that's that's been top three bucket list. I, I want to go to the UAE. Um, <laughs> I finally got her to say maybe. okay, or oh maybe we're at maybe. maybe now She's back to maybe. <laughs> I, I thought I had to all in on that. <laughs> Should have locked the deal. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. So I mean, there there may be some instances where that yeah. you know situation may come may come up. Well, we were just in um, Macedonia. Mm -hmm. And there it's, it's male, female, like the mm. women, they don't go like the coffee shops only have the men. They don't drink alcohol there, but they wow. sit and chain smoke. But the women, you know, like I had to go a few times cause that's where you eat. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they waited on me and stuff, but you could tell it was like, why are you here? Wow. Well, and again, there's a very big difference between the capital of Macedonia right. versus like Totova, which is like a, a smaller city. Right. And, mm. you know, even the, the even village heavy, that we went to. A heavy right. Muslim influence. Yeah. Okay. That's right. different. Mm, yeah. But they all thought sense. I was Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone thinks that. Everyone thought I was Mexican. <laughs> no. And then they are mad at you for not speaking Spanish. I know. <laughs> wow. So yeah. last question, mm -hmm. what is it about the other person that they do for you that make you feel loved? Oh, she, she gives me hugs all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, she, she gives me hugs and, uh, uh, that, that's, uh, that's special. Uh, my mom gave me hugs all the time. You know, my dad, you know, would give me hugs too, but it's just something special knowing that the person that you're going to spend the rest of your life with is just so solidly, uh, in your corner and just, you know, what do we call it? Ride or die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that uh, is really uh, a, a great thing to to have in your life, um, uh, even after ten years. So I'm looking forward to the next fifty with you. Uh, <laughs> uh, just knowing that uh, your love for me is unconditional. Uh, no matter what we go through, I know at the end of the day I can count on you and and that you're there for me. So thank you. <laughs> um, I would say for him, it's uh, he's super, super helpful with the kids, with the house period, but with the kids especially. Um, so he'll give me my time when I need to do stuff business related or whatever. He'll be like, oh, go out, watch the kids. You go, you do whatever, you know. And he's taking on nighttime duty with the kids so I can come home and and work and stuff. So it's it, he's been so helpful. Because I'm trying to retire. Let's <laughs> <laughs> get this business popping so I can retire. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right, I lied. I'm going to ask you one more question. No. <laughs> A sleeper question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you guys have done the couple synergy program mm -hmm. how has it impacted your guys relationship uh, tremendously um i think uh, before then um at least for me um i was in a very uh, uncertain place uh just emotionally spiritually everything and um since since that that time i've been able or really working on uh, being vulnerable uh just letting my my feelings out whatever they may be, uh, as opposed to just kind of holding them in. Uh, it's been, uh, extremely helpful, um, uh, less stressful. Uh, as even, even now as I deal with work issues, I, I think I called it the other day and was like, you know, I'm strangely at peace with all of this. <laughs> it's not, <laughs> I'm not, uh, uh, you know, just fretting and just, just kind of going through 10,000 scenarios in my head and, and feeling stressed about things. So, um, and that has uh, helped us uh, connect uh, even more. And she, now she doesn't feel like she doesn't have to always uh, pursue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can uh, just kind of give of myself uh, more freely. 
That's I, awesome. I agree. Definitely. I think it's been very helpful as far as helping me to understand some issues that I was dealing with that I really didn't know I was dealing with inside of our relationship. And so it's helped me to kind of have a better understanding of where I'm coming from, where he's coming from, and, and how we can kind of work together more to make sure that, you know, that rifts don't happen in the future and that we can kind of nip things in the in the bud. So. We, we want to thank you both, Charles and Manisha, for joining us on Couple Synergy today. This has been quite a treat. Thank you thank for you having for us. Thank you for having us. It's been great. <laughs> you know, we get wounded through relationship and we heal through relationship. Mm -hmm. And people have been sharing their stories since the beginning of time to share and bond and grow. And we hope that by you guys sharing your story, it's enriched your lives and the lives of our listeners. Thank you. For all you listening, please subscribe to our podcast and, and please leave us a review. We'd really, we'd really love that. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, the Couples Weekend Intensive, and our premier program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone that could benefit from this topic, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life, synergize your love.